here's what you got going on. The effort is off the charts. The determination is off the charts. He He's very physical and wanting to hit the ball. He, he wants to give it a whack. You know, he's not like, he's not like timid with his body movements. Right now, in my opinion, that's pr pretty much his calling card. What I mean is, he's doing a lot of shots over the net because of him. Okay, he's swinging low to high and the, the stroke, the grips aren't bad and all that good stuff. But if he has a little better understanding about exactly where his racket should be lined up and stuff like this, he would be so much more consistent. Because I, I look at what I'm seeing here, he's kind of just athleting the ball over the net. He's just kind of manufacturing the power and it's not really like, you know, like effortless liquid type power. You know, he's like, ugh, he's trying hard and that's a great quality. And once he gets bigger and he gets this more under control, that will really help him. But for right now, let me explain the backhand. Okay, and the way I'm gonna show you, once again, is the best way to get it. And I've had a lot of people that have had amazing backhands. Sharapova, Venus, Serena, Caparati, Roddick's backhand, and then back. So just a lot of people that have had very good backhands. But the best way to hit the backhand, the most efficient way, is the way Djokovic does it, or Murray, or Safin, or Agassi, or Marty Fish. They really have the best backhands in the last five years. And here's what they do. When the ball comes over, they pull the racket all the way back, and the right arm is almost straight. The racket head, the left elbow, is bent, or the left arm is bent. So the right arm is straight, the left elbow is bent. The racket head is above the hands. The racket, once again, is to the outside. See how my racket's set up? It's almost like a left-handed baseball player, except my hands are around my waist. Now look at this. See that? Now watch this. Kind of look familiar? Same as the forehand. There's some similarities. But there's two hands on the racket, obviously. Right arm is straight, but relaxed. Left elbow is bent. The racket heads above the wrist to the outside. Okay, this is how the stroke should be set up. And it's all the way back. See, I don't want you to have it here, then the ball comes, you go, wee, and you do this. We want it all the way back. And you can probably look, you can look on the internet, just put Djokovic slow motion back in. And you'll see, he's waiting, just like Rick's telling you. Right arm straight, left elbow bent, racket above, a little bent. Now, here's what happens. When I feed him the, uh, the backhand, he goes like this. He takes the racket back, then at the last second, he grabs it with the other hand, just goes get in there you know he kind of he takes it back like this which we don't want then he grabs it at the last second and the racket is pretty much like straight and he goes low to high and just kicks it over the reason why he might like it better maybe than the forehand because he has two hands on the racket he feels stronger it facilitates more body rotation naturally so for the littler kids younger kids less goes wrong because they're just more connected because there's two hands on the racket. But the way you're taking it back and this stuff, we got to change. So from the ready position, I want him to go like this. If his hands here or here, his hands will always be on the racket. See, I don't want you to go like this and just grab it. Does that make sense? So whether his hand is here or here, it doesn't matter. If it's here, he slides it down right away. Or if it's there, he's in business already. And you take it back. He can take it straight back, which is fine. But at the end of the day, the racket head has to be above the wrist. Here we go again. Remember how I said that the racket head's above the wrist? That's the most, that's the easiest way to get the power. So ready position. So when he takes the racket back, go ahead and turn. Turn your feet. Turn it. So the racket is gonna be his right arm is straight. Right arm would be straight, his left elbow would be bent, the racket would be to what we call the outside, that would be the inside, that would be the outside. So from this position, and I'm not going to get too deep, I'm going to show you the server there too. I want him to be waiting for the ball like this. Now, when the ball comes, all he does, he drives his legs and hips, which he does naturally perfect. He has very good active hip rotation. All you're going to do is make like a little candy cane or a little ferris wheel. Alright, so, 
go ahead and turn. Show me where your racket's going to go. Now. That's, that's good. Closer together. The hand should be around the pelvis or the waist area when he takes it back. You don't want him to be like this. So, your hands are around the waist. And the strings, see where the strings are? They're facing to the side. So, something like that. Now, when you're going to wait like that, all you're going to do is this. When I throw you the ball, you're going to pull it. Just pull with your right arm. Just pull the right arm, and you're making a little candy cane. Go ahead. That's the key. Let's see it. So, ready to position. Go ahead and turn, set the rack. So, when that, before the ball even comes, and there has to be another change. His right hand, his right hand, the grip is incorrect. With the right hand, he's holding an eastern grip. What that means, he's kind of shaking hands. He just changed it before I could grab it. You know what? <laughs> I looked down, he moved it over. Yeah, so yeah, that's where you want it. That way you get a lot more power. It won't feel like awkward. I do know I was going to be new. Someone might have told you that. That's good. That's good. So, from this position, it's good. That's, that's much better. You can delete that. He just had, he's already used that. <laughs> Set the racket. Ready? Go ahead and get it back. Now, from that position, do whatever you've been taught. You're in the game. You're in the game. That's all I want you to understand. The racket's all the way back. It's to the outside, and it's a pull. The days of doing this, and then grabbing it and just doing that or over. You want to, you should be waiting for the ball like this. What? Boom. That's how the stroke's going to be. Just a forward pull with the right hand. Go ahead and take it back. Awesome. Back it up. Now bring it around. Great. This one's great. Do it again. Back it at his up. Keep it up here. Perfect. See, this is why I want him to change this. And I can't get too deep into the real deep mechanics, but when he swings the racket, you see how this is up? When he swings it, I want the drop, this is the right, the drop goes into the hip. See, what he does before, he would go like this, he would just grab it, put the racket down and kind of muscle it. And see, I want him to swing the racket when it's up so it goes, so there's a, look, I have like a rhythm. I have a rhythm where he's sticking it down too soon. Does that make sense? So when you want to swing, when the racket is up, keep it up. Do it again. Rack it up. Okay. Do you like it, Frank? Do you like it? So you want to just go like this. Does that make sense? Just bring it around. Ready? Position. Now go ahead and turn and get it back there. Yeah. I'll keep it here. Whoops. Drop it too soon. What I was telling you that, the drop goes into the hip. Watch. Drop goes into the hip. Drop the hip. So when you got it drop, that's the hip. Okay? Drop that up. See how he did this? He went up, down. And what I want him to do is keep it up. When he swings it, the drop goes into the hip. It's a rhythm. See, I got to change the tempo of the swing. Keep it up as long as you can. Drop goes into the hip. You felt it, you saw it, you heard it. Good. A plus. Again, keep it up here. Don't move it. 